Right, so hi, my name's Matt and uh, I'm here with Stu, who's one of our amazing mammal keepers here at Paynton Zoo. And uh, you might have guessed we've come up to see our giraffes today, just so you can meet them. Right, so we've got uh, Offaly here, who's uh, feeding on some hazel. Right, so um, <laughs> this hazel's come from Paynton, from, uh, from around the zoo. Uh, how come? Why are we feeding her this? So giraffes are browsers, um, so in the wild they would naturally be feeding on trees and that's how the, the classic African acacia tree is shaped by the fact that the giraffes are feeding on it. Um, so we need to try and replicate that um, here in the zoo. Uh, we're really lucky that our gardens team um, grows um, all of our browse here, everything comes from on site. Uh, we've got a nicely wooded site so we're able to pick uh, lots of different species that are grown naturally um, around site for them. Um, th these are hazels, we're not trying to feed them the same diet as they would get in the wild but we're trying to give them the, uh, like an equivalent diet. So as close as possible. As close yeah. as possible. So um, I just so happen to have here some acacia. Uh, so this is uh, some bare branches, twigs of what the giraffes would be eating in the wild. Um, the, s the thorns on this are stunning aren't they? Yeah. So, they're eating something with a two inch spine on it, but yeah. so they've got a soft mouth. Yes, um, it's incredible actually, if you watch them feeding, um, you might be able to see it with uh, Artillery now, uh, so they actually stick their tongue out and grip individual leaves with their tongue, their tongue's prehensile. Right. Um, it's one of the longest tongues in nature as well, about 50 centimetres long, um, <laughs> and yeah, as it spends a lot of time out of the mouth in the hot Afri African sun, um, you'll notice that the colour is blue, and um, that's just to stop it from getting sunburned. Um, but yeah, it's prehensile, you pick individual leaves off from between the thorns right, on okay. the acacia trees. No, I mean, you're right, when you look at their mouths like up close, as we can see them here, they've got very sort of, you know, tiny hairs around their mouth. And yeah, it's very, very soft, very soft muzzle. Um, if they do allow you to touch the, the, the mouth, it is very, very soft, yeah. Right, okay. Uh, here at Paynton, they're eating uh, brows. What else would you give them in a Okay, uh, so we give them pellet twice a day uh, with some cabbage, that's their breakfast and tea. And then during the day they have access to what's called lucerne, which is a bit like hay, um, but it's fleshier and it's got a higher protein content um, and it's more suited to browsing animals. And um, we winch it up to head height for the giraffes, so obviously they're not having to bend down to, okay, to right. get the food. Okay. Now uh, another interesting thing about giraffes, so we've mentioned about the food, uh, is what comes out the other end. Uh, Tilly's like adult female, right? Yes. So she's going to weigh yeah. over a tonne. Just about a tonne, yeah. Just about a tonne. But the poo, the poo on a giraffe is a little bit um, of a surprise, I think. If you think of another animal that weighs a tonne, then what's the poo like, Sue? Well, I actually have some poo right here. The poo? So it's no. what? An inch long, probably weighs about three grams. Right, okay. I don't know when you first <laughs> saw giraffe poo, but I can remember seeing uh, giraffe poo for the first time and thinking, crikey, that's a very small poo for a very big animal. Okay, and uh, I mean the ruminants, so like, like a cow or some other animals, they'll, they'll cough up what they've eaten back yes. up and chew it again. That's right. It's, it's got a long way to go. Yes. So yeah. coughing up a long way. Yeah. Well, they, they obviously have quite a, a muscular neck um, and you can actually see the food travel from the gullet all the way up their neck, up into their mouths and then their cheeks puff out right. um, full of the food, rechew it and then they swallow it down. You can track it, you can follow it going right down the neck again. So when we're talking about giraffes then a lot of people will look at their heads and they'll see that they've got what look, look like horns but here's your word of the day, those uh, structures on the top of a giraffe's head are called ossicones. Now Stu, I was reading that when giraffe calves are born yeah. that the ossicones are actually sort of folded back along the head. Yeah, they're true? soft. Yeah. soft. Yeah, they're soft and they do spring up after a few days um, and it's actually bone, it's part of the skull, Right. Okay. Um, so that hardens off. Um, so a bit like with a human baby, the skull um, is still fractured and can right. still move slightly and that hardens over time, the same with these guys. When we're talking about a baby being born, I mean it's quite a dramatic entry into the world, so yes. yeah. that's a, a two metre drop, the female gives birth standing up, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's but that, that's essential, right, it's okay. actually essential. It does two things, first of all, the impact on the floor um, actually kickstarts the breathing, okay. um, which is really important, but it also tears the umbilical cord. Right, um, okay. And so we actually need that drop. I mean, it looks really brutal when you see it in, in the flesh, but um, it's actually a necessary part of the birthing process. Right, okay, so it actually snaps the cord? It actually snaps the cord. As the baby drops, that's yeah. quite a uh, brutal entry. <laughs> it's quite, yeah, but, okay, but that's um, the way it would happen in the wild. That's the way it would happen, yeah. One thing we haven't talked about is giraffes in, in the wild in conservation, they're really a symbol of Africa. If you think of, uh, of an African skyline, and we've talked about acacia trees and, and uh, giraffes walking across, they're so like a symbol of Africa, but uh, giraffes are vulnerable as a species. Yes. So, so why, why are giraffes 
in trouble in the wild? As with every animal that's in trouble in the wild, it's really human encro encroachment. Uh, unfortunately, like we say, with the, the, the increase in human population, wild spaces are becoming smaller and more concentrated, and it's one of the effects. Well, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Stu. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed meeting our giraffes, and hope you'll be able to come and see them sometime soon here at Paynton Zoo. Cheers.